big lightning storms coming through. It's so hard for your body to get used to. Bloody spectacular. I'm not 100% sure on what these berries are. Here we go, there's a fire right there, that's great. Cool, hey Atlanta, thanks so much for um, being my dietitian. Um, you've got all my details. No um, mm -hmm. What do you think I should do? So essentially we're trying to put on, I guess, as much weight as we can in the next six weeks. So ideally what we need to do is focus on big calorie intake. So from, from what you've sent me, we're currently looking at around 4,000 calories a day. I'm wanting to boost that up by another 6,000, so to 10,000 calories a day for optimal kind of fat gain essentially. Now, we want to think about doing this, obviously, in the healthiest way possible. We just don't want, you know, Maccas every day. <laughs> um, so we need to consider, you know, putting some healthy fats in there and where we're actually getting these calories from. And also working from how you eat normally. Uh, we don't just want to be changing your diet completely because obviously that can cause things like gastrointestinal upset and also could have an issue with you not being able to digest uh, digest the food properly, um, which in turn you may not be able to eat the amount of food that we need. So to get to 10,000 calories per day, um, what we're going to need to do is first get on a mass gainer supplement. Now, mass gainer supplements do vary quite a lot, but we're obviously aiming for the one which has the highest amount of calories. Um, so in this case, we're looking at something called serious mass, which has about, about 1,250 calories per serve. So an easy way to get a lot of calories in with just one kind of shake a day. Um, so we'll be doing that. We'll be looking at a high energy, high protein diet and an easy way again to fortify our food so that we're not increasing the volume of your food so you don't kind of feel sick and super full all the time we're going to be fortifying it which means that the general meals that you're eating we're just making higher in calories without adding extra volumes so it tastes good but it is thick um, and so when i graduate to the two scoop milkshake it's going to be hard and i've kind of almost felt a bit sick last night like slightly throwing up so I don't want to push it and then start creating an aversion to this stuff. So I will just allow myself to sink in, a, getting used to it before I go too hard on it. All right, there it is. Let's have a taste. I've warmed it up. <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. That's the kind of thing you'd really want to eat when you're camping after you know, a long day. It's obviously full of fat and all sorts of stuff. It's going to be hard to get through, uh, but uh, I guess that's part of the job. Making a little splitting peg. The idea is I can basically make, I can make planks, and I can make any kind of live trap that I need, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. That's basically two very rough planks. I've still got to split this one, but that one is a plank. I gotta say, I'm actually feeling a bit excited because I've been researching the Tasmanian fishing rules, and I discovered that some of the lakes in the middle there's no restrictions in winter for catching trout and they're full of trout and provided they can get around the national parks regulations through permits and whatever I might be in one of those beautiful Tasmanian lakes sure it'll be pissing down rain the whole time but I mean I grew up trout fishing so <laughs> if I can trout fish uh, look out <laughs> that uh, it's gonna be I mean I'm gonna enjoy uh, catching fish if, if there's fish available uh, Trout tastes great, they've got a fair bit of fat. 
And, uh, oh man, I'd be so stoked if it's going to be in a place like that. So I've just been practicing traps or trigger mechanisms at least. And this one here is a little stick. If you tread on that stick there, that sets off the trigger and that water barrel is just going to land uh, on the ground there. So with a little tiny bit of pressure, surprisingly easy to do. And if I make a net that can then pull up an animal, it'll be trapped for life. That's pretty funny. I just watched uh, the playback and I'm starting to get a double chin because um, the weight gain program is definitely working. <laughs> I feel like I'm pregnant. But uh, I weighed myself the other day, I was 98.6, which is amazing. I'm sure I'll crack 100. Um, I've still got about two weeks to go, two, three weeks to go before I head down to start. So uh, yeah, progress is happening. So I've just flown down to Tasmania for a few days. Just I've been down here plenty of times before, but I really come down to check out the vegetation. And um, <clears throat> also do a bit of fishing because I think this is a likely place that it might be. Pretty spectacular spot. This is a national park around here, so I'm guessing it can't be in here, but it might be in a place like this. Lake Petter. Bloody spectacular. So this is exactly why I'm here. I'm not 100% sure on what these berries are. I think they might be pepper berries, but it allows me to go back and research them a bit and find out what they are. Um, I can't, I don't think it's actually pepper berry. I think it's something else, but they taste like lily pilly. I'm confident just to have a crack at it straight away just because I recognize I just can't quite put my name my um i can't quite place the name of it but it's good there's also um banks here's these uh sword grass here which you can make um you can crush the seeds up to make a flower uh, the seeds are actually off this one and not in season at the moment this lake petter they always keep full and the overflow goes into another dam which then generates hydro I'm just thinking this one's probably not likely to be this the place but maybe the other one is still keeping up my milkshake regime as i'm doing this other stuff still trying to put the weight on so i'm fishing with tasmanian devils at the moment and I'm going to make something similar, some kind of lure that approximates that with the wire that I've got. So on this trip, my mate Harlan's come with me. And you're not really supposed to, well, you're not allowed to tell anybody else about being on a loan unless it's essential. And Harlan's actually part of the plan if I do win it. Uh, my wife Melinda will come down and he's going to look after the kids while we're away. So because he knows about it for those reasons, uh, he's also just coming on this trip. A uh, short little trip down to Tassie, uh, which is nice to have a bit of company for once. We're just driving around in a hire car and uh, cooking up as we go. We were going to fish this place, but uh, it's actually out of season. So there's just lots of little rules about everything everywhere. So um, so that'll be one of the factors in whatever site they choose is that land use is national parks or um, marine zones all sorts of different factors anyway we'll keep driving around So I just flew my drone around just because it's a beautiful place and it's nice to get a bit of stock footage in the bank and also just check out the lay of the land.
Yeah, and if you're wondering why I've got this scratch here and a big puncture mark there, I went down to Melbourne to visit my mate and uh, his cat just launched into my face. It was a pretty playful cat. I wasn't trying to attack me anyway. It scratched me out pretty bad. Um, but part of that trip was to um, just do a bit of fishing, have a bit more thinking about southern fishing, and also to test my fly using paracord as a fly line and basically found that the line wasn't particularly suitable. I need to taper the thicker line towards the end. So um, it's given me another job to do to, to test out a viable method uh, of line taper for fly fishing with the very limited um, materials that I'm going to have. Yeah, you can definitely see I'm putting on weight. I've now put on about 10 kilos uh, or maybe 7 to 10 kilos. <laughs> These ball bits here is from when I had to do a um, a stress heart test with a big ECG thing attached to my chest as part of the entry requirements just to make sure my heart health is good. Just been getting some different gauges of wire. This is the heaviest gauge I can take, which is 20, and it's stainless steel. It's a really stiff stainless steel, and this is 22. It's a mile of stainless steel, and I've just been comparing how easy it is to make um, chicken wire out of it because I think that's going to be one of the things really that happens um, with this live trapping kind of thing. And this one is just so much easier to make traps with. The, that's the really soft one. So I'll do a little bit more playing around. And I'm excited to see what this is. It's a constant battle. Well, it's just a race against time for the stuff to arrive before I depart. I think I know what this is. It's gonna be good, hopefully. Oh, it's going to be disappointing. Let's have a look. <laughs> That's going to be a warm coat. Yeah, this is warm. It's heavy and thick. And I read some reviews and someone said you can basically stand, sit outside in a coffee shop. Look how wind's strong. You can basically sit outside a coffee shop in London in the middle of winter and not be cold in this thing. Uh, there's a thunderstorm hitting outside, so I'm just going to test out some of my wet weather gear. These are some uh, hunting boots. They're like gum boots, but they're really soft. Uh, I'm not nearly as flexible as I used to be because I've got weight around my stomach. It's quite, it's quite different being slightly overweight. I've never had that experience before. I put a lot of thought into what jacket to get and. This one arrived in the post today. It's very breathable, very waterproof. And that's what I want to test out now. She's bucketing down. Whoa! Lightning. I actually don't want to go. <laughs> I'm going to stay near the house. So far I feel dry, which you'd expect, because I'm basically wearing $1,500 worth of Gore-Tex top and bottom. So this morning I'm making char cloth out of some paper bark, which I just pulled from a tree in the backyard, and I've just been heating it on the stove top there to get all the moisture out, and I'm just gonna try putting a spark into it. This is my new Überleben top of the range uh, ferro rod. So, I'm just going to pull out some of this stuff, the charred paper bark, and see if it takes a spark, because the non-charred chuff, the non stuff didn't, and I didn't expect it to. This one gives off quite a lot of sparks. Yeah, see how it's burning in the corner there? There we go, there's a fire right there, that's great. Uh, this morning I've been making traps. This is my possum trap, made from uh, the wood that I split out the other day. <sighs> I'm hoping to have that finished probably by tomorrow. So I can just learn all the mistakes on this one. So when I'm out there, I can do it quickly and efficiently. Good boy. You're a good boy, Ollie. That's all my stuff over there. 
ready to go. I've only got uh, six days before I leave, probably even five days actually. So I don't even know where we're going yet. Just uh, about the day before we're gonna get a airplane ticket, I assume to a capital city without being told where to from there. And uh, yeah, so we really just, we don't know where we're going. Uh, I'm also wearing my clothes just so I can find stuff out. This is the new Leatherman. It turns out you're not allowed to modify stuff. So I had to get a new Leatherman. Um, so I'm just, um, you know, just practicing stowing that because I want to make sure it doesn't fall out of my pocket when it's in there like that. So I'd rather find out here uh, if it's going to fall out rather than being out in the bush. All right, this is the trap that I've made out of uh, all of the primitive or limited stuff that I can use. I'm going to obviously put chicken wire along the side. I'm just practicing the door and the trigger mechanism. So I'm going to set it now. Yeah, so the idea is when the pressure goes on the foot plate, the trap door closes and locks. So it's locked in there. Can't get out without this lever coming up. So I'd probably have to put one on both sides. <clears throat> this is the first time I've made a trap like this. A little bit clunky, fairly cumbersome, fairly labour intensive, so it's good. Uh, I don't know if I'll stick to this design. It, this definitely works, but I reckon I can probably make it more efficient, uh, so I can crank out more of them. At the moment, I reckon this one will probably take me two days to make. I want to try and be able to get it down to one day if I can. I'm going to run out of time though. Uh, I'll do a little bit more on this, and then I'm going to move on to some other things. But at least I've made a bunch of mistakes. Had the benefit of using some power tools just to speed up some things. So I can really just learn what to do rather than having to practice the labor of drilling holes with a pen knife and stuff like that. But um, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good, successful first trap. So the other method that I used works, but this is going to be more efficient. Uh, I can do it more quickly, I can use less wire for binding. And it's going to be strong. This is version 2 of the trap. And it's really more solid without even putting the straining wires on. Um, it's easier to put these cross braces in. And it's going to require less effort to make. So. Definitely glad to have found a better way of doing it. All right, uh, the sun is setting. It's about three days before I go and my phone's just gone bing. And I've just got the email and I'm about to find out which state uh, alone Australia is gonna be in. So let's see where it is. Tasmania, That's that was my guess. I'm leaving on Sunday for boot camp. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's very good. I was kind of, well, I wasn't hoping. I just thought it would be Tasmania. So that's been my main prep focus. So that's good. I would have been comfy anyway. For a second, I thought it might have been in New South Wales today from what they're talking about on the phone, which would have been great too. But anyway, I'm happy with that. Tassie's going to be wet and windy, which is the conditions that they told us to prepare for. So that's that. Exciting, cool. I better read through the rest of these details. <laughs> it's amazing how much my body has changed. Like my face looks different because I'm I've got so much weight on now. I reckon uh, I'm 17 kilos heavier 
in two to two and a half months of stuffing myself stupid. My gut's just big. Like I had a bath last night and my gut was sticking out of the water and I just realized I'd have to put an extra 15 centimeters of water in the bath to cover up my stomach. Uh, it's weird, my legs are fatter. Uh, I feel like I get tired quickly and I feel less agile. Like if I had to jump out of the way from a, I don't know, a car running at me, I just feel heavier because I am literally, it's like walking around with a 17 kilo pack within your body, it's kind of a weird feeling. There's lots of other random things about being overweight. Uh, it's a good experience. I'm looking forward to not being overweight. Can you see how I'm panting here? Um, that's not really exertion. It's just that I can only take shallow breaths because I put on weight so quickly that my skin hasn't had time to stretch. So my diaphragm is squashed in this tube of skin. And I literally feel if I take a big breath that my skin's going to split. <laughs> I need to hurry up and lose some bloody weight just so I get rid of that horrible panty feeling. And uh, so, I don't, you know, hopefully I don't get stretch marks, uh, stretch marks around my stomach. Anyway, not much longer and instead of getting fatter, I will be getting a lot skinnier. Do you not have the photo in you? Yeah. Is there already doing it? Yep. Hey, Hansa. Go, go. Can you point it at me? I'm pointing it at you. It's pointing over there. But you're in the middle of the screen. So just to summarize my weight gain over time, you can see at week one there, I'm at my normal weight, actually just a couple of kilos heavier than normal because I preempted it a bit. And then I tried doing it myself and I quickly jump up a couple of kilos, but then I just plateau. And then after seeing uh, Atlanta and putting in that dietary plan, it just goes up in a straight line to the sky. So it really made a huge difference. It's uh, 6.10. I've got all my bags packed that I'm taking, three bags. And there's a taxi picking me up in uh, about 10 minutes and taking me to the airport down at Hobart. So, uh, yeah, it's been a fair bit of prep <laughs> over the last two, two and a half months. Uh, I feel fully prepped both mentally and physically. So, yeah, hope you've enjoyed seeing this kind of prep journey that I've been on and hopefully it pays off on the actual alone itself so i'll obviously <laughs> have a chat again when i come out the other side <laughs>